Welcome back, AP Calc AB students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're going to take a look at our second example covering topic 8.4. Uh, 8 We're still talking about the area between curves. This problem here is a, a little bit more complex in that you've got to uh, work through a bit more calc and, and arithmetic. Uh, and it's uh, very important that we organize our information correctly in order to get our correct answer. But by and large, it's asking the same thing. Find the area. Uh, of the region bounded by the graphs f of x equal 2 minus x squared and g of x equal x. Sketch the graph and shade the region. And you'll notice down in the <clears throat> bottom right corner, I do have the uh, box for our area between curves formula, which is just integrating the f minus the g. And as we always have said, the f is going to be your top curve and the g is going to be the curve that's on the bottom. And you're always going to be able to tell which is which, especially if you do take the time to graph. And that's sometimes why we do like to graph. So I would go ahead and use a little color here to sketch 2 minus x squared. I'm going to graph that in blue. Again, if that's a little bit complicated for you, you can always run some values through x. You could probably do that in your head. Let x be 0. y, of course, is 2. If you let x be 1, 2 minus 1 squared would be 2 minus 1 or 1. If you got as far as letting y be 2, I think it's going to work. 2 minus 2 squared, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, but I don't think we really have much more room to go any farther to the right. However, we can let x be some negative values, but by virtue of that square, hopefully you all are in agreement that you're going to get the same output as you did when you were plugging in positive values. So if we connect our dots, Oh, let's see if I can do a little bit better than that. That was a swing and a miss. That's a little bit better. I'm still embarrassed, but it'll work for us. I think we have a upside down parabola as indicated by the minus in front of the x squared. Now, if we graph g of x equal x, hopefully this is a lot easier for you to take care of. It is a straight line going through the origin where the y and the x are the same. Kind of forces it to have a slope of one, doesn't it? and that's what your sketch is going to look like. Lo and behold, you have a closed region. If you were that rancher and you wanted to put cattle in this region, they certainly wouldn't run away because they are bounded by fences on all sides. Um, I'm not so sure if I was a cattle, if I would like this particular uh, fenced in area. The OCD and me, if I were a, a, a piece of livestock, would probably struggle with that a little bit. But hence, that's going to be our shaded region, and we're going to find the area. So here we go. It's, re it's time now to set up our uh, expression here for area. And we know that it is a definite integral. It's going to be bounded by x values. Now, I know you might wonder, well, how do we know it's x values? That's a good question. We haven't seen anything else except setups in terms of x. That's what the title 8.4 is all about. By virtue of having x's in both of these expressions, that kind of seals the deal for us that we're going to use an integration with respect to x. But I'm just going to start to plant the seed that's going to be really important later on to kind of show you what's really happening. Because what's really happening is that you are finding the area of a rectangle, once again, that's in between these two graphs. And once you find the area of that rectangle that's got a very thin width to it, you're going to find the area of the rectangles that are all around it, and you're going to add them up, basically. And that's really what's happening, because f minus g is nothing more than the length of that rectangle from top to bottom. And the dx is the width. Think of it like that. The delta x and the dx are the same. And the integral just says, hey, add a whole bunch of stuff up. And there we have it. So the boundaries of integration are going to be these endpoints, the x values of the endpoints. So that would make negative 2 and positive 1. A little bit different than example 1 that we had earlier, where the boundaries were pretty much spelled out for us as a pair of equations that were given. That won't always be the case, and you will have to find the intersections. If you graph, the intersections will take care of themselves. If you don't graph, not a big deal. You could set these equal to each other and solve them, and then you could find the inter, uh, intersections that way. 
make sure the only really other thing that could really go wrong at this point in the setup is to forget which function is on top, and that would be the 2 minus x squared in this case. So here we go. That would be your integration setup. The rest is just the, well, I don't want to use the word the mundane calculus. Calculus is never mundane, but it's the uh, basic integration procedures that you had learned earlier uh, in unit six. So the integration of two is of course two x. The integration of x squared is x cubed over three. And the integration or antiderivative of x is x squared over two. All of this will get corralled together and evaluated from one down to negative two. And lo and behold, we notice that, hmm, we don't have our best friend. Our best friend is zero. Zero is not an integration boundary. We just have to live with it. All right. So if we plug our 2 in for x, we have 2 minus 1 third minus 1 half. That seems pretty straightforward, replacing all of those x's with 1. Now you'll subtract. Make sure you use parentheses. You're going to now plug negative 2 in for all of these x's. I'm going to simplify as I go. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Drop in the minus. Negative 2 to the third is negative 8 over 3. Now, seeing as how I have two negatives, I'm just going to take care of that right now and make my job a little easier at the end. Another minus that's going to drop down. If I plug in negative 2 and square him, that would be a 4. 4 divided by 2, of course, is 2. And so I will finally arrive at my answer at this point, which I could certainly uh, stop if it were free response. If this one's a multiple choice, then it's probably going to be simplified. So let's do that. And here's what I suggest to simplify. Let's make things easy. Let's just combine the whole numbers, right? A lot of times I'll see students make a little mistake right about here if it's a multiple choice problem, which I definitely want you to be able to avoid. Just be very careful. I always tell students that just because you're now in an arithmetic part of the problem doesn't mean that you should ever let your guard down, all right? It's still just as easy to make a mistake with arithmetic as it is with calculus. So we have 2 minus a negative 4, which would be 2 plus 4 is 6, and then minus another negative 2 is adding another 2. So if I see this correctly, I think we've got 2 plus 4 plus 2, which is actually going to be an 8. Now I'm going to combine other like terms, like the terms that have a third in their denominator, a three in their denominator. So it looks like I have minus one third, minus, see that important minus, another eight thirds. So that would be minus a nine thirds. And I know that that's going to reduce to three in a moment. We're going to take care of that. And then we have just the minus one half that is sort of an oddball just hanging around. And so now we should be home free, or at least I hope, to say, well, this is just eight minus three minus a half, which is five minus a half, which you could say four and a half, nothing wrong with that, 4.5, nothing wrong with that. Or you could write it as an improper fraction, nine over two. And when it really comes down to it, if you were to go in and, and try to add up all of these blocks, well, you could kind of guesstimate maybe, but it turns out that you'd have about four and a half blocks, uh, exactly four and a half blocks, I should say, of enclosed area. So there it is. There is your area between curves problem number two. We only have one more problem left in this topic 8.4. We're going to take that look at that in the next video where we look at a couple of trig equations and find the area between them. If you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe. And as always, we'll see you at the next video.